Small lobs in Yellowstone, still a big problem, geologists report. The new eruption timeline, researchers say, changes the way geologists view lava flow events and volcanic hazards in Yellowstone National Park. Small lava eruptions in the Yellowstone volcano's caldera were more dramatic than expected and occurred in clusters, so, while not catastrophic, is still a big problem. This is the conclusion of a new study by researchers who used radiometric dating to flesh out a timeline of volcanic activity in the iconic National Park. The Yellowstone caldera, a cauldron-shaped depression in the ground created when a magma chamber emptied and collapsed, was formed about 631,000 years ago then. The super-volcanic eruption released about 240 cubic miles of rhyolitic, thick and silica-rich, magma and deposited ash over much of the United States, but these dramatic events are rare. Only three are thought to have occurred in the last 2.1 million years, and the scale of the eruption small occurs more often. These small episodes of volcanic activity are known as intracaldera eruptions because they occur through ventilation within the caldera. They usually take the form of lava flows, swelling lava domes, or, in rare cases, small explosive eruptions. Although their volume is much smaller than the caldera forming eruptions, typically only 0.1 to 17 cubic miles, the total amount of rock erupted by an intracaldera event is equivalent to a larger eruption. The lava released in this episode has filled much of the Yellowstone caldera, which is why national park visitors do not see obvious depressions in the landscape. Geologists believe that since the Yellowstone caldera formed 631,000 years ago, more than 86 cubic miles of material has erupted of at least 28 rhyolitic intracaldera eruptions, which can be grouped into two stages. Between 580,000 to 250,000 years ago, at least six eruptions occurred in the caldera. This is known as the rhyolite of the upper basin member. More recently, between 160,000 to 70,000 years ago, there have been 22 eruptions that formed the rhyolite of the central plateau member. In their study, geologist Dr. Mark Stelton and his colleagues at the U.S. Geological Survey attempts to constrain the timing of rhyolite occurrence of the central plateau member. To do this, the team used a radiometric dating technique called cubed to the power of 9 AR to the power of 4 AR geochronology, which involves measuring the decay of potassium to argon in a mineral called sanidine found in Yellowstone rhyolitic lava. The researchers determined that 22 rhyolite-producing eruptions of the central plateau member occurred in five short episodes, at 160,000, 150,000, 111,000, 104,000 and 71,000. In this episode, two to nine rhyolites erupted from volcanic vents several to several miles apart over the course of 400 years or less. Each saw between 2.5 to 31 cubic miles of magma erupt. Stelton said, in comparison, the eruption of Mount St. St. Helens in 1980 erupted about 0.25 cubic kilometers, 0.06 cubic miles, of magma. What this means, he explains, is that intracaldera eruptions are more dramatic events than previously thought, often involving multiple eruptions occurring in different parts of the caldera at the same time. Furthermore, if each of the five eruptive episodes is actually a single volcanic event, this means the long-term eruption rate at Yellowstone is even lower than expected.
While these eruptions typically do not have the large explosions that characterize caldera-forming eruptions, they can occur in clusters where multiple rhyolite eruptions occur over a short duration. Don't let Yellowstone's smaller rhyolite eruptions fool you. It's still a big deal.